This is Cape Cod, a popular summer destination at Massachusetts. But if you rewind back to 1984, it looked like this. So almost 30 years later, an entire island just showed up. How? What caused this? Well, the reason behind this is linked to the changes in the surface of the earth by various factors like wind, earthquake, storm, rain, ocean waves, etc. The list goes on. But most importantly, through these processes of weathering, erosion, and deposition. In this video, we're going to focus on weathering, specifically the different types of weathering. Let's get into it. So, what is weathering? Weathering is simply the breaking down of rocks by natural forces, by forces of nature. For example, 25 years ago, Mount Everest was young and thicker. However, due to different climatic conditions at its peak, its structure failed to stand strong for a long period. Sometimes it is hit with excessive heat by the sun, and sometimes it immediately gets covered with thick snow. Now, it can get very cold on Mount Everest. Temperatures can drop to as low as minus 76 degrees Celsius. Very cold. So, when a rock, no matter how big or small it is, gets hit with so many different forces of nature, then it breaks down eventually. And all these things that contribute towards breaking a rock are called weathering agents. In other words, there are three main types of weathering that made Mount Everest thinner in the last 25 years. We're going to look at now the three types of weathering. In 2020, it was discovered that shrubbery plants and mosses have started growing on Everest. And come on, if you do hiking, you must have also seen plants growing out of rocks while hiking at your favorite locations. These are examples of biological weathering. Because when there is a gap inside a rock, the roots of plants can enter inside those cracks. And when those roots grow over time, they become big and strong enough to break the entire rock. The same applies to the sacred fig plant. But, how are cracks created inside of these rocks? To understand this, we're going to dive into another type of weathering. This is called chemical weathering. Now, chemical weathering. With rising pollution levels worldwide, the air has become more toxic than ever. And when it rains, the rocks over time slowly get damaged by the pollution or the polluted toxic rain, which is also known as acid rain. The acid rain eventually breaks down the rocks into smaller pieces, and this is why we call it chemical weathering. The acid is the chemical inside of the rain breaking down the rocks. Now, let's go back to Mount Everest. We're now going to go into mechanical weathering. Now, every day, temperatures increase and decrease on Mount Everest. This causes the rocks to expand and contract. This is known as thermal stress. So when a rock is constantly faced with different temperatures, it eventually breaks down into smaller pieces. Now, before we end this video, here are a few questions just for a quick review. First one is, what are weathering agents? Try to answer that question. Pause the video and try to answer it. Second question, what are the types of weathering that are making Mount Everest thinner? And third question, explain each type of weathering in your own words that were discussed in this video. By now, you must be wondering, why did I just learn this? What's the purpose of learning it? Well, I'm going to outline to you three different, car actually four different career paths that you can take that can pay you handsomely. So that you don't feel like the content that you've learned today will go to waste. First one is a geomorphologist. You can become a geomorphologist. Now a geomorphologist is the one who studies the earth's surface like how mountains are formed and what separate different continents from each other and for this work they are probably paid more than 74,000 a year. Second career path that you could consider is to become a geologist. So geologists on the other hand focuses on the broader perspective of earth like how earth was formed, how different planets are formed, what are the factors that are contributing towards the shape of Earth and much more. You can also become a soil scientist. As you can understand from this word, soil scientists focus on how different factors like chemical, physical or biological factors affect the fertility of the soil. As a fertile soil helps in creating food for us, they are probably paid more than 93000 a year. And fourth, 
environmental scientist. And environmental scientist focuses on how Earth's environment is damaging and protecting our life. They collect the samples and experiment in laboratories to find solutions to our serious problems like climate change, as this profession acts as a huge responsibility to our lives. They probably could be paid more than 60000 a year. And this is, these are just assumptions, guys. I don't know the exact figure. But, you know, I carried out some research to tell you what career path you can choose because, come on, you don't want to be just sitting here learning this stuff for nothing. All right? Now, for those of you that don't want to be an employee, you can always go ahead and start a business. So you can start a business where you provide data to other businesses about different areas by examining how, you know, the weather or nature would or could affect the structure of land in that area. You could give guidance along with data showing what is suitable to build in that location, what type of building they should build, what's the structure. Obviously, that would be more to an architect, but you can provide data about the environment as to what is happening in the environment based on what you sample, what you research, and what you study about the rocks and the different things that are in that environment. And also, you can tell them what this location could be best used for, depending on the type of soil, as I said before. You know, study the weather conditions that it has experienced. Types of buildings probably that should be built in that location. Anyway, I'm just brainstorming. So if you could come up with any other ideas of your own, go ahead. Come up with your business ideas. But I got to tell you something. Patent those ideas if you're ever going to leave them in the comment section. Because we love the comments. Comment below, like and subscribe this video. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Have a good day. I'm out.